Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the extent to which the most hardline of Brexiteers have actually been helping the Remain cause and may well see us through in the end. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So to begin with, I have to break a bit of a habit and give some plaudits to Jeremy Corbyn for really changing politics in this country. He began his leadership, if you recall, of Labour by calling for a kinder form of politics. And by goodness, we got it. Corbyn led the way by being kind enough not to show up the Conservatives when their ministers were breaking the law or pressing ahead with a Brexit will kill in our society and economy. And the favour was returned by the far right during the Brexit party itself. I saw a cracking quote yesterday. Brexit is in the hands of idiots, and they've dropped it. And they are idiots. There, there are some on the Brexit side who try and cultivate an image of the intellectual. In fact, it fooled me for a little while. There were some on that side that I was thinking to myself, you need to be a little bit wary. They might be quite clever. But they keep falling flat on their arse. That myth has been completely dispelled now. Take Jacob, take Jacob Rees-Mogg, sorry. He tries to project this image of a clever, well-educated man but he is an ignoramus. His latest blunder was to describe an ant as being capable of running 300 miles per hour. Now, he was referring to a story he'd obviously been reading in the news this week, which talked about an ant that could actually shift pretty quickly a whole two miles an hour. I mean, do you want a guy who confuses two for 300 to be making any economic arguments to you? I myself was joking on Twitter that if Brexit is eventually cancelled, and that is still a big if, there's a big danger there, then it may well be down in no small part to hardline Brexiteers repeatedly refusing to vote in favour of leaving the EU. It actually got a silly number of likes. I think the irony is not lost on anyone as to just how much the Brexiteers have done for the Remain cause. Remember that the withdrawal agreement said nothing about our future relationship with the EU. If they'd all have voted to leave, we would have been out of the EU half a year ago now. And the negotiations for that eventual relationship would be in the hands of those buffoons right now. And for those of us who are now in the majority in this country that wish to remain members of the EU, we'd be buggered. But thanks to heroes like Arlene Foster, Peter Bone, Steve Baker and the ever moronic Mark Francois, a guy who likes to think of himself as a veteran, but who in reality just spent his time stirring beans in a kitchen tent, we're nearly seven months on from the original Brexit deadline and no nearer leaving the EU. Of course, the other EU member states could easily pull the plug on the whole thing. Young Claude Juncker yesterday was saying he'd like to do just that. But there has been no serious indication that this is likely just yet. And the situation is that there have always been three possible outcomes for the Article 50 process. We leave with a withdrawal agreement. We leave with no withdrawal agreement or we do not leave at all. Now, leaving with a withdrawal agreement has proven impossible because the hardline Brexiteers, for reasons of varying levels of stupid, are opposed to any withdrawal agreement that maintains our commitments under international law. This effectively rules out a deal this parliament. And even if a general election shook things up a little, well, those hardline Brexiteers are fairly likely to retain most of their seats. There are some Remain alliances building up over the country and that may thin their ranks a little, but I would think they'd still remain a major bloc. So even if Boris Johnson were to win the next general election, which I still think is a bit doubtful, but let's say he did, he still wouldn't be likely to get a deal through. He still has the same problem. Remember, Theresa May had a majority. She triggered a general election whereupon she lost her majority, specifically because she knew a majority wasn't enough to be able to get a deal through with the ERG blocking it. She knew this a long time before a lot of other people did. She needed a much larger majority. Now, for Boris Johnson may win the general election. I think it's unlikely, but let's say. It's not realistic to suggest he'll win it by a large margin. So he can't get a deal through them. So then there's no deal. Now that doesn't distress the hardliners at all. However, the bulk of parliament will never sanction it. Doesn't matter, he has a majority. The other Tory MPs will say, no, we're not voting for no deal. And that is something Johnson cannot help, as I say, even if he has a majority. They just won't go along with it. Now, I don't know exactly what would happen after a general election. The Conservatives have been consistently ahead of others in the polls, but still too far behind to realistically be worth a majority. But once the election is triggered and campaigning begins, who knows which parties will still rise to prominence, which will fall short. The Conservatives will, of course, play dirty. They've already broken the law during the past two general elections 
and this time it will be pretty blatant. They've already been spending public money on their campaign, as well as corruptly ordering the civil service to compile data in order to target people as Cambridge Analytica were doing during the Brexit referendum and the presidential elections. In fact, I don't like the idea of any further elections and frankly, until the issue of social media abuse has at least been tackled. But even here, we may still be helped by the hardline Brexiteers. If the Brexit party stand candidates in lots of seats, especially ones that the Conservatives have a chance in, then they could help out Labour or the Liberal Democrats massively. They have already helped in the elections this year. In each case, there's been a by-election where the Conservatives would almost certainly have won it were it not for the Brexit party helping them out, or helping us out, I should say, by splitting their vote. It's quite interesting to see elections where Conservatives have their vote split. I've never really seen it before. They usually benefit from this happening to their opponents, but not themselves. It must be quite alarming. But the point is that no realistic projection of Parliament after a general election is going to give Johnson the numbers to get either a deal or a no deal. He can't realistically get a majority large enough to ignore the ERG and DUP votes, and they keep refusing to vote for a deal. And at the point at which I'm doing this video, that's still the case. He also can't get enough lunatics to be elected to drive through a no deal. So he'll be faced with two options. One, put his deal up before Parliament, but subject to a confirmatory public vote with Remain as an option. That would pass through Parliament, because Labour have said they would support that. But it would earn the ire of the hardliners in his party, who may well depose him as they did May. Or two, he could keep trying to get a deal through, as May did and be deposed when the hardliners get tired of him kicking the can down the road. And as I say, bear in mind that the ERG are unlikely to give Johnson as much time as they did May, because from January, all those tax avoidance measures are definitely online, properly online. They've been making a fortune by betting against the pound and then tanking its value with brainless policy announcements, but they will now face the problems that caused them to try and rush to drop out of the EU in the first place. The ones motivated by financial piracy which is not all of them, I may add. Some are just morons with no benefit, personal or otherwise, from leaving. But the ones who are motivated by the financial freedom to rip their country off will be increasingly distressed as we move towards the end of the year. Marc Francois said that the country would explode if we were still in the EU on November the 1st. It would be quite interesting to see him therefore vote against the thing that would take us out by then. But I'll settle for just him exploding. That would be amusing to see. And if we start, it'll still are in the EU on November the 1st, it will again be down to the DUP and hardline Brexiteers in the Conservative Party, refusing to accept the withdrawal agreement. If they voted for it, I reckon the numbers are probably there to get it through. With Labour rebel support, I think they've got enough. And they could, ironically, then have their no-deal Brexit. There isn't, as far as I'm told, time to implement the deal by October the 31st, as I've already said. And Johnson wouldn't have been legally obliged to seek an extension if Parliament voted the deal through. But because he's spent so long trying to persuade unsuccessfully the DUP and the ERG, well, he is going to have to, in all likelihood, seek that extension. I mean, they came so close to their prize, but in a move that brings smiles only to the faces of Remainers, they've yet again thrown it all away. And so we return to that really rather good quote from the beginning. Brexit is in the hands of idiots and they've dropped it. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.